the graph of the inverse sine function is defined uh, for, well, by inverting the sine function between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. The reason for that is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, the sine function takes all its values from negative 1 to 1. And that says negative pi over 2, 1. It should say negative pi over 2, negative 1. So that, uh, again, the sine function takes all its values from negative 1 to 1 and doesn't take any value twice. That way, when we invert the function graphically by uh, reflecting every point around the y equals x line, if we had a table, remember, we would reverse the columns of the table to get the inverse function. Um, that will give us a graph that looks like this. It starts out here, vertical, and I didn't draw it very vertical here, and then it comes around to here to vertical. Um, approaches a 45 degree angle or slope of 1 at the origin, and so forth. The point negative 1, negative, or negative pi over 2, negative 1 reflects to the point negative 1, negative pi over 2. Pi over 2, 1 reflects to 1 pi over 2. And the graph has this shape and takes the values indicated by your calculator. And here again, we state that the inverse sine is defined for x equals negative 1 to 1. Because, of course, we go from negative 1, negative pi over 2, to 1 pi over 2. x equals negative 1 to x equals 1 y values range from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, as stated here. If we invert the cosine function, we have to take a part of the cosine function that takes all possible values from 1 to negative 1, or negative 1 to 1, depending, and which only takes each value one time so that when we invert it, we get a single valued function which is kind of a redundant term because a function has to be single valued. Um, we choose to start at the origin and go to here. So we're going to invert the cosine function from x equals 0 to x equals pi. Between these two values, y ranges from 1 down to negative 1. And we take each value exactly once. Each horizontal line crosses the graph exactly once if we restrict ourselves to this segment of the graph. Inverting through the y equals x line, and this one's a little harder to see, uh, the point pi negative 1 is going to reflect to the point negative 1 pi, negative 1 pi being way up here. And if we reflect straight across this line, well, I haven't drawn things very accurately here. It doesn't look like it's a perpendicular reflection across this line. If you draw it to scale, though, it is. If we reflect the point 0, 1, we end up here. Uh, this at this point, the graph of the cosine is horizontal. So at this uh, point, the graph of the inverse cosine will be vertical. Similarly, at this point, since this one's horizontal, this will come down toward vertical. In the middle, they'll approach uh, a 45-degree angle, or slope of negative 1 in this case.